Hey everybody, what's going on? My name is Christine V and I had a fantastic interview today with Solid Rock Entertainment. I hope to see you all in the future again. Thank you so much, Patty. If you ever plan to more west Travel my way, take the highway, that's the best Get your kicks on Route 66 It winds from Chicago to L.A. More than 2,000 miles all the way Get your kicks on Route 66 Now you go through St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri And Oklahoma City looks mighty pretty You see Amarillo Gallup, New Mexico Flagstaff, Arizona Don't forget Winona Kingman, Boston, San Bernardino Won't you Solid Rock family, you're now tuning into Solid Rock Entertainment with your host on the Central Coast, Samuel Gardner. Today we have a special guest, but as I always like to say, all of our guests are special, and that's none other than the electrifying, the voice, Miss Christine B. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Before we get into all of the action, right now we're here on site at the Hotel Melby, which is at 801 East, Strawbridge Avenue, Melbourne, Florida. Come check it out. Good food, good vibes, good people, right? So now we're gonna get into Miss Christine B. So, where were you born and raised, Miss Christine? I was born and raised in Rhode Island. Mm. Okay, up Rhode north. Island is the biggest little state in the Union. Rhode Island, it, it I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, you wanna be a little bit more clear on that? <laughs> well, it's the smallest state in the United States. Okay. It's and the ocean state. The ocean state. That's my first time hearing that, actually. Yeah, it's the ocean state. It's okay. surrounded by water. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, I'm from the Bronx, so, okay. you know. Yeah. So yeah. you have, like, Long Island. Yeah. Oh, a little bit. Of you got your own little island. You got my own little thing going. <laughs> uh, when did you realize music is your calling? Um, my parents actually discovered that because um, I used to have meltdowns as a child. Um, I would say they started putting me into dance lessons straight out of nursery school. Okay. I was still in diapers when I was when I started doing dancing. Like I, it was like two years old, and I would take out pots and pans mm. in the cupboard. I would, you know, open up the cupboards and I would take out pots and pans. Making a mess. Making a mess. Yeah, huge mess. <laughs> and uh, I would just like arrange them. You know, according to like the big pot was, you know, the bass drum and then the small pot was the snare. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I didn't know, you know, that terminology back then. Okay. But, um, and so I just would take, I would climb on top of the counter and get wooden spoons and just start making a whole bunch of racket. Oh, man. And sorry for your drive pain. them insane. <laughs> and, you know, my brother, see, I'm adopted. Okay. Okay, so that's the first thing I want everybody to know is that okay. I'm adopted and um, I was adopted at six months old. Mm. Um, my parents, my whole family are full-blooded German and um, my brother is my parents natural born son mm -hmm. so then here i come and you know i'm the oddball of the family so right, right. Um, i've always been the oddball of the family mm -hmm. um so i'm this artist type you know you know the loud one <laughs> and um so that's when my parents started discovering things about me you know um I've, I think um, just loud, annoying sounds, and then they started like putting me into dance classes. Right. Um, then they bought me um, musical instruments. Starting like I think like my first instrument was a xylophone, like a mm -hmm. toy xylophone, mm -hmm. and then it was um, like you know they. I don't think my mother really appreciated her pots and pans being. Hit, you know so they finally got me got like a little to drum set you know? yeah um, so then um, you know my parents owned a, a clothing store um, mm. so yeah for 41 years actually okay. and so um, you know they were going on these buying trips to New York mm -hmm. right right yeah and mm -hmm. um, Manhattan yeah well 
all over New York. You know, we would go on these buying trips. And so one day they, they took my brother and I to a park and, and um, it was this big music festival going on. Yeah. And I didn't want to leave. Mm. And I was so mad. And they were like, come on. And then I was like, no. Mm -hmm. And then my, my dad had to drag me out of there. So it was just like, you know, I just knew like music was always my calling. Like, you know what thing. I mean? Like I, it was just, you know, then I remember, um, you know, they bought my brother and I back in the day. Do you remember those like, those um, different color cassette tape? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So my brother had one, his was red and mine was blue. And I was doing things, you know, mm -hmm. back then. Um, I would hear a song on the radio. Right. And then um, I would record it off the radio. And then I would sing harmony. I would steal my brother's cassette recorder. Mm -hmm. And then I would sing harmony to the song that I already recorded. I was doing like crazy stuff okay, like that. Okay. Like, you know, I was already At that young running. age. Yeah. Okay. I was doing crazy stuff like that. And um and then by middle school, um, I was playing the flute and my parents bought me a flute. And then they bought me a piccolo. And um so it just kinda like went on from there and I realized that I could sing mm -hmm. when I was about eight. So mm -hmm. eight years okay. old. Like I just that was just came natural to me. And I was already writing songs and things like that. Oh, that young age. Young yeah. prodigy. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, being that you were, you grew up in, you know, uh, Rhode Island and you got that New York flavor and you, you came to the great Brevard County. Woo! <laughs> so, through your observations, yes, through, through your, you know, your perspective, where do you see culture headed in Brevard County? It's, it's, um, I think Brevard ironically has a lot of culture. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of hidden talent in Bavad. Mm -hmm. um, okay. okay. I've met a I lot of you. cool people, mm -hmm. you know, um, just through um, my own musical experiences here. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I've been here since 2012, I want to say. Okay. And, um, About 10 years. Nobody knew who I was. So, you know, I come from a very, very you know, crazy musical lifestyle, of course, mm, you know, right. being in, you know, up north, you know, like being all over Massachusetts and, mm -hmm. you know, Rhode Island, you know, we've got Providence, we've got like big theaters, we've got, oh, yeah. you know, a lot like of Boston and, you know, Fall River, you know, then Connecticut, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit in New York. And of course, you know, my sister, Mylene, you know, she produced a lot of my music and, you know, then she moved to Philly. So, I mean, you know, then it's like, you know, when you're in cover bands, then you come down here, you know, you do your original music, and then it's like, you, you're the new person. Right. And then right. nobody knows who you are. Mm, so you had to work your way in. Right. And also, I was a songwriter, too. You know, I was, I was writing songs for a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. So then, like, when you come here, and nobody knows who you are, you know, it's like, okay, so I basically get to start from scratch. But that's okay, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, you know, yeah. you just got to... So, um, I started off, um, I met a couple of people and I started busking on some street corners okay. in Cocoa Beach when one of them was a tiny turtle and um, I started singing there Okay. and I met this girl Jackie and she was helping me out and um, so from there just like shows just started coming and, mm -hmm. um, and so that's how it happened and, and nice. then, you know. And here we are. Here we are. Exactly. <laughs> so, so. Who, who are some of the artists that have inspired you over the years and, you know, and just inspired you musically and in every way? Who are some of the artists? Well, believe it or not, I am classically trained as a vocalist mm -hmm. and as a multi-instrumentalist. Um, but... Pretty nice, man. That's, that's nice. But it, it helps me out a lot because I want to say I listen to a lot of rock and classic albums. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I loved ACDC. I love Led Zeppelin. I love like everything classical, you know, like all that stuff. But I'm also an opera singer. I was trained with opera vocals, musical theater vocals. Okay. Um, I learned all that in college and um, it was really, really cool. Great mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. But um, I love Prince. That is Prince, okay. Tina Marie. You'll hear that a lot in my sound. Mm, um, okay. I love annoying sounds. Like I, I produce music, and um, I'm trying to come out with a new sound. Mm. It's in between. Um, it's progressive R&B, which is like a new genre of music that is 
been around for maybe like a few years now. Yeah. Um, it kind of like went from neo soul to moving over to crossing over to progressive R and B kind of sorta. Okay. Um, and a little bit of lo-fi kind of sort of like i'm in between there okay that kind of like experimental I like that vibe. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so like i call my music loft haze it kind of like elevates it takes you to a, another level um but my music you'll always know it's christine b because it's got to have like some weird annoying sound like something that up uh, yeah that's christine b you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. with like a bunch of like harmonies packed into it like in the background you know so you said you you like prince and i'm looking at your earrings are those kind of inspired by the artist formerly known as yeah, vibe just, they're, they're unks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay so you got this thing called going on for you called bvip that's right. All right. So in your own words, what is BVIP? Okay. So the story behind VIP, first it started out as VIP. Okay. Okay. Right. So my best friend and I, back in, I'm going to say in the 90s, it was probably 94, um, we were in New York mm -hmm. and we were waiting to get inside a club. I kid you not. And I, I never, like, I was very, very self-conscious about a lot of things growing up, you know? Right. I've been a person that's been bullied in my elementary, in my middle school mm -hmm. years. So, you know, I've had to overcome a lot of things. You know, people right. think that things were handed to me. They right. think, you know, because my parents owned the clothing store that I was handed all these things. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a clothes, story. right? Yeah, okay, but I was the one taking my parents' clothes, but I was also, like, making holes in the t-shirts and stuff like that mm -hmm. and doing my hair all different still driving my parents crazy but i love you mom but anyway <laughs> um but things did not come easy to me you know yeah, um yeah. i also have a learning disability so you know mm -hmm. i was very self-conscious about a lot of things okay. you know yeah. so um i never thought of myself as somebody like up here i don't think i'm entitled you know what i mean mm -hmm. and people may think that about me and think like because i have like ooh, she thinks she's big she's VIP. No, it's not like that at all. Mm. So um, my friend and I were waiting to get in line to get into this club. And it was back in the day when like, you know, we're, it was at Webster Hall. Okay. You know, Webster Hall was in between third and fourth. You yes. know, you remember that? I yeah. don't know, you're from New York. so you know. I was little, but I, I have a vivid memory of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Webster Hall, like we were just like, okay, we're waiting in line. And I'm just like, man, don't they know we're VIP? You know, it was like it started off as a joke. Right, right, and my right. best friend's like, We are VIP. And da 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 da. So <laughs> we're just like, We're VIP. <clears throat> so, like, we're just like, So ever since then, it just became a joke. Like, I think I'm VIP. You know, so, very special person. And so, my, like, when I got back home, my license plate said VIP. Okay. Everything was all VIP. Out. Oh, wow. all I, I was all out, but it was like it was an insider. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I always told myself if I ever owned a business, it's gonna have something to do with VIP. Okay. Oh, I and see how it comes together. So when I came to Florida, my license plate still said VIP. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So um, that's what happened when I did open my business. Mm -hmm. I was like VIP, but then VIP was obviously it was taken. So my last name begins with a B. So I just put the B in front of VIP. Mm. So I, ironically, um, I want to give people the VIP treatment. I, I want to treat people and make that. them feel special. I want to give people something that I was never given, mm. you know? Um, there's a lot of people in the music industry that don't make you feel like you should. Mm -hmm. um, it's a rough industry. It's a very rough industry. There's a lot of people who will gaslight you. There's a lot of people who will hurt your feelings okay. and not treat you the way that you should. Um, but I think when they have an experience with my team, mm -hmm. I want people to feel like, you know, it was a good experience when they come out to one of our shows i want people to feel like i felt a part of that show mm -hmm. like i really felt like i was in that show like mm -hmm. i felt something so I this is this is bigger than music this is actually your purpose yeah it really is all right right and that's to be honest with you um even what i'm doing right now i believe like you know i'm a godly person so my whole thing is i believe everyone is here for a purpose for a reason you know, we all need somebody. So, I, hey, I, could, I commend you for doing what you're doing. Through music, you're inspiring and touching people. Because I've, I've even seen a footage where you were performing at a uh, senior citizen's uh, 
a Cedar Sensu's place. I don't remember the name of it right now, the, the place, but, and you know, I was like, wow, that's, that's different, you know? Like that's, that's actually dope. I, I really, I said, this woman is doing something that's more than music, it's more to uplift people and inspire people and touch people. Because a lot of times older people, like senior citizens, a lot of people don't pay attention to them. So for you to, I don't know what inspired you to go there and do that, but if you don't mind touching on that, because that, that really touched me to see that. So what made you say, okay, you know, senior citizens need some vibe, they need some, some Christine B. What was, the, what was that about? Just what you said, they don't get enough of it. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people are, they just, they don't see it, you know. I see so many people, younger kids, and they just, you know, do things for clout, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel that the elderly, they don't, they don't get out enough, number one. They yeah. don't have, I, I've heard a lot of stories that there's not enough people that visit them. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people get left in homes. They don't, a lot of their family has either passed on or I hear a lot of, oh, this guy, so it's many just, stories that, you know. Right, it, it touches you. Family, family members, like this one's fighting with this one or that one's fighting with this one. And mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to go see so-and-so. And they just, people just get stuck yeah, in homes. Up, yeah. And they might have money, that's great, but... One thing I have learned that money does not buy you happiness. You better believe that. And <laughs> if I could just come in and just do a few songs and make somebody's day and you know Amen. create epic memories and Amen. you know I'll never forget um, my grandma Siegfried um, when she was getting older and older, she was losing her memory mm -hmm. and. Um, but I would go in and I would play my flute. And when she was in a nursing home mm -hmm. and she started remembering things, she, I would play a song called Hamburg, which is um, a German song. And I would just start playing it and her eyes would just pop right up. And she started singing along and my mom would just like break down in tears. And mm -hmm. I would be like, what's going on here? You know, I, I was too young to understand it. You know what I mean? But right. um, it, it's just things like that, that, you know, Music, it may not be a spoken language, but it is a language that is in between space and time. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just, people have to understand that it creates epic moments in time. Most definitely, I agree. And um, it's never gonna go away. No, no, most definitely not. Where do you see yourself in the future, musically? Musically, um, I like to be a silent producer, and I've been a silent producer for quite some time, and a lot of people do not know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't need to boast about it. I don't like to um, say a lot of things that I do. Mm -hmm. um, I feel the greatest accomplishments that I've done are behind the scenes, and I see myself doing a lot of things in the future behind the scenes, Okay. and I've already started to do that. Okay. Um, I like helping people. Mm -hmm. Um, I like mentoring people. Um, I have a few motivational um, projects coming up, motivational speaking projects coming up. Okay. I'm working on something right now mm -hmm. with some officials from Melbourne. Oh, okay. You want to keep that on the low or you want to give us a little something? You want to keep, oh, all right, we'll keep that on the low. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're just, I'm just saying um, I am a member of the American Business Women's Association and mm. I'm very proud of that. Yes, um, yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of things that I'm, that I'm doing. I'm doing a lot of traveling soon, so. Okay. Yeah. Let's segue a little bit about, you said you're a part of the women's organization. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say, I, I wanted to ask you this question. Do you, mm -hmm. What are the challenges you feel that women face in this industry that maybe men don't, you know? So what, what are some of the challenges, if there are any that you've come across? Well, we're Speak not taking it serious. Female producers are not taking us. We don't get first dibs per se. We don't, you know. It's, you know, when I say, "Hey, I'm a female producer," and it's just like, okay, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, but other. I feel like male producers are yeah. just like, you know, oh, you know, they always get first dibs, and it's like, you know, it gets tiring sometimes mm -hmm. to be, you know somebody second fiddle and I feel like some of my some of my friends that I see out there um, 
you know, it's almost like they have to wear almost close to nothing, you know, just to be seen, you know, like mm. producing tracks. And I'm just like, wow, you know, and I'm just like, okay, you don't have to do all that. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's like, your tracks are good, you know, just be you, so <laughs> be, be unique, just be you. People are going to hear your music. And I've given, I have given away tracks for free, mm -hmm. you know, just to get people on them, you know, and they're just like, wow, I didn't know you'd produce like that. And I'm just like, yeah, hello. <laughs> you know? you know? So it's like women women got to push a little extra hard. Exactly my and, point. Mm, mm -hmm. and, and probably do a little bit more than... Same as far as booking too, you know. Mm. Uh, for instance, um, when I first came to Provide, I could not walk into any club and just be like, Hi, I'm Christine B. Can I talk to whoever's doing the booking here at this venue? people would not take me serious you know what i mean i had two strikes against me one for the color of my skin and my size you know and you know it was it was often difficult but the minute i started singing they're like oh okay yeah okay yeah I, before the interview is over i'd like a little a little sample of what you got vocally i'm gonna i'm gonna ask i'm gonna call on you to do that if you don't mind show the people what you christine b is made of vocally um but before we even go there um, what so far is the highlight of your career, would you say? I would say um, being able to help put other people into higher positions mm -hmm. within BVIP Entertainment. Okay. Um, when I first started BVIP Entertainment, it was just myself mm -hmm. and my husband, and we were just like, okay, how are we going to make this work? <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. Because obviously we needed to update our gear and we needed to do a few things and it was just like, uh, wow. you know, we had to pay, you know, bills on top of that, you know, this, yeah. that. Okay, so I'm like, hmm. So, but, you know, it's all, it's all right, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. And plus, I, you know, my, my husband went through a serious, horrible out of cancer in 2015 wow. so you know on top of all this you know what I mean and I'm mm -hmm. still you know I'm a number girl you know I, but I learned tactics from my father you know because my father is he's a mathematician he's a physics you know guru so I learned the business piece from my dad you know my dad is a very very smart man you know he was the one that held up you know the business and mm -hmm. you know from my get singers for 41 years mm. and so i learned well he thought i wasn't paying attention i was <laughs> <laughs> and so um you know i had to make it work mm. and that was you know i had to do what you know whatever i had to do and um and we did it and it was horrible and um my husband almost passed away on me twice and it, it was it was crazy and we've lived through a lot of trauma you know not only my own trauma but it, you know that trauma and then in 2020 um our son passed away oh, so man, we had it, it's that. just it's just one thing after another <sighs> but it's just you know we just keep on going my you condolences know? thank you yeah. it's it's just we just but you know what the train doesn't stop and no, we just no, have no, to no, keep no, going no. but we've been fortunate mm -hmm. um, you know so i just had to make it work and um pretty much like everybody who works with us they stay with us for mm -hmm. years you know what i mean right. because they believe in our work and um you know so it's been that's been the biggest thing that's been very important to me mm -hmm. and you know we've moved them into different positions you know we had a karaoke host who started with us and now she was able to move into the operations position for karaoke you know so she's in charge of all the KJs who come and go you know right. and then um, our musical director Patrick you know now he's going to be because I'm going to be doing a different aspect in BVIP so he's going to be moving into the operations position of okay. BVIP altogether. So he's going to be not only is he going to be the musical director, but he's going to be managing the whole thing of BVIP. So okay, I'm very very happy. Things about are moving that. forward. Things are moving very in much in a positive forward. light. Yes, <laughs> we need it. We need it. We need it. What can one expect at a Christine B show when they attend? Well, I want to say it's going to be great. 
Okay. <laughs> it's All um, right. if I had my way, um, it's it's coming because I am releasing some new tracks. They're going to be originals, and um, I want to bring people in mm -hmm. something more intimate, something more. Um, I want people to obviously, like we said before, mm -hmm. I want people to leave feeling something, um, and um, it'll be something like a smaller audience. I want people to be close to the stage. I want like a twilight show, obviously, mm -hmm. if I can, you know, I prefer indoors, but if it's gonna be outdoors, I would have like twilight lights, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like pillows yeah. in the front, okay. candles. You got you a know? vision. You got yeah, I okay. have a vision and it's gonna be like guitar, like a Kajan, you know, somebody playing the Kajan um, and just me on vocals, something like that. And yeah. something cool. So is, is, is there a difference between uh, like the BVIP and Christine B Unplugged? Um, Christine B Unplugged mm -hmm. is an entity of BVIP Entertainment. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we have like several different bands, mm -hmm. um, several different duos. We have solo performers. Um, we're about to expand majorly. <laughs> mm, all right. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. <laughs> I mean, I am and I'm not. I'm kind of scared, but you know, but you know what? We have to just take a leap of faith and we just have to. Yeah, make it happen. <laughs> Timing is everything. Indeed. Timing is Facts. everything. So, um, what do you believe people need to do, uh, as we as a nation, to, to be better? You know, being with all the uh, all the turmoil, all the things we've been through over the years, mm -hmm. COVID and or the C, the C. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want YouTube to be yeah, the, the big C. Mm -hmm. And among all the racism, everything. What do you think we as a people need to do to move forward as a nation? Oh, uh, well, I have seen, like, you know, like, in your question, um, I feel that people should just talk to each other. Like, if somebody has an issue with somebody else, just go straight to the source, mm -hmm. you know? Um, instead of taking to social media or do subliminal messages on your social media platform, stop it. You know, just go straight to the source. You know, I have this, always have this saying, have a cup of coffee with me, you know? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a cup of coffee with me? No, if you, I didn't. You, you, I'm, no, just, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm, I know you have it, no, per se. Like, really? But I'm anyway, you know, like, have a cup of coffee with me. Like, yeah, yeah. if you have an issue with me, just, like, I'll invite you. Just, why don't we meet and have a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. you know? Because then, you know, you never know. Like, if, maybe we can work this out. If you, right. if you can't, if we can't, then... It is what it is, right, but right, yeah. I'm telling you, like 99.9% .9 of the time, if you did have that cup of coffee with me, you would find out something totally different. Mm -hmm. But instead, you know, people mm -hmm. just don't do that anymore. People just don't pick up a phone and talk to each other anymore. Mm -hmm. They'd rather use a text, they'd rather go on the internet, they'd yeah. rather, you know, and that, mm -hmm. it's like stirring the pot, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, and I, that's the problem. Mm. And if people just didn't do that anymore, then all oh, this would go somewhere else. That's my take. Wow, so we're like robots these days. Indeed. Facts. <laughs> you see, but we didn't even have coffee and it was still a vibe. So can you imagine with the that coffee? Vibe. Grab coffee with Christine and have a talk. Mm. Um, or tea. It's good. Hey, that'll work. Mm -hmm. Where can people uh, find you on social media if they're looking for Christine? Christine B. Vocal. Mm -hmm. Instagram, Facebook, or B V I P F L mm -hmm. on Instagram or Facebook, or B V I P Entertainment dot com. Oh, no. <laughs> I, say, I say that like dot no, com. If, if, if y'all don't find <laughs> Christine not, online, we're not Star Wars here. <laughs> that's on you guys. Um, Christine, it was yes. a pleasure it was talking a pleasure. to you. You know, Definitely. getting you have a story, boy. And you know, it's Ooh. deep, it's rich, but it's real. Thank you. And it's the truth. Before we get out of here, I would love for you to give us a little sample of what you got so the people can, this can push them to go to your Instagram and all of that good stuff. You want to do something freestyle? Yeah, anything, anything you, you feel on your chest. Let's go, let's vibe with it. Let's vibe with it. So we're going to make up a song called Let's Vibe With It. Hey, if you can do it, I'm with it. Let's vibe with it. Let's vibe with it. Oh, I wanna vibe with it. Oh, I wanna vibe with it. Vibe with it. 
I wanna vibe with you. Oh, I wanna vibe with you. If you just vibe with it. So I met you today. I met you today. If you come and play, it's gonna be okay. Cause you vibe with it. Alright, okay. I wanna vibe with it. I'm vibing. Yeah, I wanna vibe with it. <laughs> Just come out with it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, I got nothing more to say. Hey, nothing more to say. Solid Rock family, until the next episode, keep everything solid and don't forget to vibe with it. Vibe with right. it. Vibe with it. <laughs> <laughs>